time. I, I want, <laughs> that'd be the worst pickup line. Let me get that big girl. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so fuck yes, welcome to After the Hype and the Mute Hosts. I'm going to do this over again. That's not next Saturday. <laughs> oh, I got all right, you, so bro. fuck yes, welcome to After the Hype and the Mute Hosts. Always Brian Dressel. With me, as always, is Jonathan Hardesty. Happy to be Chewy here. Chewy Darso. We got you, bro. Emily Blake. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> Was the second one better? You got to leave both in because we were eyeing over yeah. the second one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that again. Uh, so if you couldn't tell, our special guest this week is former co host Ryan James. Hello. If uh, you could tell, that's cool. Yeah, Hi, yeah. Mom. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Your mom's just like, I know him. Yeah. <laughs> Those swears, though. <laughs> no swears. Yeah, the intro can't really make any of our moms very happy. <laughs> I thought I raised you right. <laughs> no. Uh, all right, so we're doing a quick where have you been doing? Unless, Ryan, do you have anything to plug? Do you have anything you've been working on you want people to know about? Yeah, no, I didn't work on it, but I saw Thor and it was great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll do a where have you been doing. <laughs> we're going to jump right into bring, it. You can bring that back up. Uh, I did Thor last week, though. Yeah. Are you allowed to do the same thing two weeks in a yeah, row? Yeah, totally. Right. Well, I wasn't here yeah, last week. He wasn't week. here. Okay. It's yeah. new for him. Do you have anything else you want to add to it? So far, she said it was awesome. I saw Thor at BlizzCon, and yeah. it was even more awesome. How do you know? You didn't <laughs> see it with me. Wait, you saw it at BlizzCon? No, I saw it. I don't. How do you know your experience of seeing it was more awesome than my experience of seeing it? Oh, I'm saying it was more awesome seeing it at BlizzCon than seeing it not at BlizzCon, which you didn't. <laughs> Because I was at BlizzCon is the answer uh-huh. to that question. <laughs> hey, guys, got just it, in case it, you were it, wondering, Ryan went to BlizzCon. <laughs> yeah, but he's more excited to talk about Thor than BlizzCon, which says a lot about That's BlizzCon. That's not good. Really, you guys derailed the Thor conversation by t- <laughs> saying you already did it. We already did this one. So BlizzCon is great. It's a convention about Blizzard games. Where How about that classic Thor? Warcraft? I actually just want to go to a convention uh, about I, Blizzards. I haven't played oh, Warcraft in probably five fun. years, and I might pick it back up for classic. Yeah. Seems really cool. Seems pretty cool. Yeah. I did that last year with us, or earlier this year, StarCraft, when they re-released that one. Yeah. It's going free, it's isn't so, it? Yeah, free to play, StarCraft. So good. Well, StarCraft 2 is free to play. Is StarCraft 1? Oh, I don't know about 1, but I think 2 is the one that was announced as free. Right. Yeah, they StarCraft 2 is free, free to play, but uh, StarCraft 1, you could get the 20 years later. I was going to say, it must be like $20 at most. I think it was 10 Like yeah. It's not a lot, but it's the the remaster is gorgeous. And oh, awesome. Um, good to hear. The Hearthstone... Uh, roguelike expansion yes what do you think about that i got to play the first three and it's gonna be a blast i yeah. loved the uh, trailer that they did for it because it's uh matt mercer who was on critical role yeah and he sang this like bard like song that reminded me of like the 70s hobbit movie oh yeah so hard like, like i was like oh wow they're going real like hard 70s and 80s D D dungeon crawling trope which i love nice cool yeah. all right i uh i fuck which one do i want to talk about mm-hmm. there's so many things to talk about Hmm. I. You can't prepare today. I did. Well, Ooh, I, I'm salty. I'm I, sorry, I, everybody. I'm it, very it's, salty today. It's okay. Ooh, are we near the ocean? <laughs> it can be salty. It's really salty. It's okay. I'm just trying. I have like three things that I'd want to talk about, but I should only talk about one. Um. Second one. The second one. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Which one was the second one? <laughs> All right. The first one. The first one. <laughs> Uh, no, well, the, the seventh one. The <laughs> seventh one. Um. <laughs> minus one. This is all just great podcasting right here. <laughs> It's like I had some. Uh, you know what? Fuck. I uh, I watched. <laughs> Start over. Fuck the yes. Ed- welcome to the after the hype. Here, here, here. No. Try it. Why are you clapping at me? It's a cut point. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just gonna leave this all in. It's just me floundering. Oh. I was. Now I we finished have you clapping in it. I finished the original <laughs> uh, run of Kirby Enthusiasm, which is okay. Uh, That's impressive. Yeah, it, it, I did it over a course of about a month. How does no one not... shoot him in that show? In, uh, I know. Right? I was I, it's a about that. it's a very good question. Um, it's an alternate universe where there's gun control. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Oh, I'm looking I cry. forward. Jesus. I'm looking forward to watching season nine, even though everyone has told me that it's nowhere near as good as the first eight. Um, but I'm kind of okay with that, as long as it's still Larry David and he's still being funny. I'm kind of on board with it. Um, although he's in some hot water right now because he made the wrong joke at the wrong time. Um, oh my god Oh comedians uh, Did somebody make yep. a too soon joke No nah, he made a holocaust joke But it was it was bad Oh that SNL joke Yeah, yeah. Was he trying to be like I'm too. Jewish it's okay yeah, yeah totally Well that's what he always does He doesn't curb all the time But that's not for a national it, audience He did it, it right. like as a joke Also about sexual assault So in Harvey yeah. Weinstein So it just sort of Was two things that maybe It was a little it was a little too soon, which is kind of his and way. And on SNL, not on yeah. my, like some kind of blue already stand up situation. Exactly. Yeah. So it was, it was a weird platform to do it, but the the show was great. Like I, I'm very happy that I, I finally watched all of Curb. Uh, I think season eight had some of the funniest moments out of the entire series, which is saying a lot. Uh, everything with Michael J. Fox was ridiculously funny. 
uh, and the Ricky Gervais stuff was great. And it was just it was a good season, and I really enjoyed the show, and I'm glad I watched all of it. That's it for me. Uh, yeah, for me, I uh, on Netflix started watching the show uh, Love with uh, that's for- a show. I forget their names. Rust, <laughs> all the- Rust, Allison Brie, right? No, no the Jillian. other one, Jillian, Jillian. Jillian Jacobs, yeah. Jillian Jacobs, Britta. and, and uh, Rust, uh, Paul Rust, Paul Rust, who reminds me so much of a friend of mine who's been on the podcast before, Paul Naraki. No, no, uh, mm. uh, Tom. Even though he would say he isn't like that, but there are some moments where he. I was, would agree with mm. Tom. <laughs> just, just, in, in not, maybe not so much uh, attitude and character, but so much as like how he carries himself. There was like a, a, sn- a small snapshot of when I knew my friend and we lived together that it, it seemed to match. Thinking of a different Tom. Yeah, not that. I thought that, you were talking about, about Tom Ford, not no, Tom Riffle. No, oh. Right, right. <laughs> That's why I was on the Tom. Now Riffle. we're all on board like, with you. Yeah, I, I don't agree Tom. with you at all. Tom like, is not I, all. Like no, that. no, <laughs> we have we have different Toms. <laughs> different Tom. Everyone's got a Tom. Everyone's got a Tom. Uh, but yeah, so I'm only two episodes in. No, three episodes in. It's hard to tell these days because I just go from one to the next mm-hmm. and Netflix <laughs> kind of doesn't delineate those anymore. It's like the credits cut to now we're in it. But I'm enjoying it. I'm just kind of cautiously watching it. I'm, I've am i been very fickle with my TV watching on Netflix. So I'm in that stage where I could bounce at the first time I get not into it. I enjoyed the hell out of that show. Yeah. Both seasons one and two. But season two gets very... Um, not as funny and okay. very very serious. That's yeah. what was surprising My to me. Is Laura that... hates it. I uh, forgot why. It uh... because of what I just said. Yeah, it's not funny. It is not. Yeah, funny. I saw the no, first episode. Dark. I was like, me. Yeah, there were a few moments where I laughed out loud, and I wasn't expecting that. So I'm gonna stick with it some more. Um, there's a lot of things I, I do find pretty funny, but I think it's kind of really... hit or hit or miss with the Judd Apatow stuff. It's really great for people who are in the industry because we because of all the the interactions that happen on set are really true to life, and they're pretty great. The, I stayed in that whole show for the girl who plays the the child star, which I, I think is Apatow's it daughter. Is daughter. Yeah, yeah. she's, she's great. amazing. Uh, and the guy who I forget it's a comedian, but the guy who plays the uh, the crafty services guy, he's fantastic. Mm. He's really funny. Oh, and there's some some cameos that pop up that mm. are really good too. Yeah, I like the I like the, the girl's the, parents. Oh, David Spade's in season two. <laughs> oh, I, awesome. I was trying not to spoil it for you, but well, I, I like. Wasn't... I don't really care. Yeah, I I, I like the uh, fictional show that they're working. On. I know Wichita, <laughs> Wichita, <laughs> with the burning cross. Wichita. The only thing I don't like about it is it's once again a story about someone who wants to be a writer, and those tend yeah. to be like, oh, this is very just industry. So yeah. I've, I've ignored all that, and I I kind of love that producer how much <laughs> how much of a dick she is to everyone. Oh yeah, she's great. I love her. Uh, Chewy, what about you? Uh well, last night we were trying to <laughs> what. <laughs> We were going through movies, and we wanted a comedy, and I went, I've never actually watched Royal Tenenbaums, and Brian did a what what, and so we watched Royal Tenenbaums, and And? I really enjoyed it. It's a good movie. (laughs) The higher your voice gets, the more you're lying. (laughs) That's great! You're awesome! I just don't, I didn't have the same experience that a lot of other people had, where it was their first Wes Anderson film. Yeah. My mm. first Wes Anderson film was Darjeeling Unlimited, mm. oh. which everyone tells me was the worst is, way to get into Wes Anderson. It? It's not, yeah. It's is not. that the sequel to Darjeeling Limited? I don't think there's that. I don't think it's there's a thing. reprint. <laughs> You're so funny, Brian. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you said Unlimited. That's the joke. Is it? Wait. It's Darjeeling Limited. Oh, it is? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was Unlimited. Nope. Uh, so no, yeah, it's I was... definitely very limited. Oh. <laughs> if you buy the Blu-ray, you can watch it unlimited times. You can see how much I cared about that movie. Oh, I enjoyed the movie. I mean, it was As fine. A movie, it's... It was fine, but with everyone, because at that time, it's we were in film Rushmore. school, and everyone had such a boner for Wes Anderson. Mm-hmm. Like, every, yeah. especially every dude, <laughs> the hugest boner. Yeah. And so then I'd be like, all right, I'll see this and see what everyone's talking about. And it was fine. It was fun. It was colorful. The acting was stilted, but that's the point. That's Wes Anderson. Uh, I love it, Wes Anderson. It, I do too, and I, I agree. I think George Ealing is his, uh, so far pro- probably his weakest, but yeah. it's it just felt like a little bit more like he was kind of honestly. It felt a little bit more like uh, just paint by numbers. I don't like the one about the kids, but I but love I, that one yeah. so. I, much. My favorite, favorite one is Fantastic Mr. Oh, Fox. Oh, so good, so fucking good. Like, that's my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite Wes Anderson film. I'm really looking forward to the dogs one that's coming out. I like the hotel one. Uh, the hotel one was really funny. Yes. My Food favorite uh, my hotel, favorite is really the first one I saw, um, Life Aquatic. Yeah. And it, man, I've been on board since Bottle Rocket. I feel like yeah, such a hipster douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> <Bottle Rocket's laughs> uh, I'm with... the hipster douchebag who hasn't seen a single one and is <laughs> oh fine with it. <laughs> 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 but 
but with uh, Royal Tenenbaums, really, it just kind of made me sad in a way because I remember back in the day when I actually did like Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Uh, mm. And I really liked her in that movie. She's really good in it. I yeah. wish she still acted like that, like yeah. did good things and didn't just try to make money off housewives, probably selling them health crap that she doesn't. That's sh- actually have not any. healthy. Yeah. According to doctors. She's just, it's just like, Ugh. Gwyneth, where did you turn? Why? Why did the goop take your brain? Darkest uh. timeline. For sure. But, okay, that's all I'll say about that. I mean, I really enjoyed it, the movie, and I'm happy I finally saw it because I didn't really... I knew that the kids were, like, stunted or something, and the dad was an asshole, but I had no idea what actually happened in the movie. So it was fun to watch. That's I like the stabbing. <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> I love that movie. That's the last time you do that! <laughs> best thing about that, just... I'm going to delete this, but the best thing about that is really that it proves that the story he was telling little boys was true because at the beginning I always thought that was a lie and then he gets stabbed later I'm like oh he actually did stab him <laughs> again <laughs> love that movie the, uh, Emily what about you first of all these are OR scrubs oh are they is still a line that no matter how many times I say it just makes me laugh like I just sometimes I'm just out in public and I'll just randomly go oh are they and I'll just start laughing um, you need to see that one which one is that that's Rushmore, Rushmore. oh uh, I finally saw Get Out uh, which everyone is get out of here busy, and every, every time someone brings up that we're like dah, 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 I'm not spoiled and I managed <laughs> to make it all the way till now without being spoiled That's I knew amazing. barely anything about that movie cool. so you didn't know about the, the sunken place wait wait wait, wait. I, I, I haven't seen wait, it wait wait I haven't seen it <laughs> oh, really? don't spoil it for wait, us now what? <laughs> no. No. I know uh, many spoilers but yeah. not I, I, no, no not offense to anybody at the table but if you haven't seen it at this point it's your fault it's on DVD you've had plenty of time but I was still like don't tell me Um, I did not know uh what it was about I, just, I knew it was about racism I knew it was like white people basically kidnapping a black guy that's like all I knew um, so I was sometimes you know sometimes when people who aren't in the film industry they ask you like now that you're working in film every day you're on set do, does it ruin the magic for you now that you know how the sausage is made like um, this movie is an example <coughs> when I say absolutely it makes it better because knowing what it takes to to make something beautiful and and well done um seeing the the pieces put together properly actually makes it more magical for me and this movie was so that like my roommate was hilarious because he's seen it and he was watching it with me and he was just watching me go oh my god the production design (laughs) oh look at those eye lines like i was just like i don't know just the the costuming of the one guy who was with the old lady just it made his costume made him look like a slave um, and I thought that was just so well done. Um, like every little, every little small, there were so, so there was these subtle editing choices that I was just like, Oh, nice. ooh, ooh. they trust the audience. That's cool. Jordan mm-hmm. Peele trusts his audience and you can tell the, the way that things are shy. It's not ex- over explaining everything. It's putting, presenting it in a way that you can put <clears> two <throat> and two together. And, uh, I just, I love that. And I, I loved everything about this movie. Like. I, I felt it was one of the best movies I've seen all year. I was very impressed by it. It's definitely in my top five so far. Yeah. It's very good. It was so... It was... It, it, Jordan Peele is a director in charge of his craft. He knows exactly oh, yeah. what he's doing. I love that the smartest people often make the dumbest things. You know, coming from the uh, Key and Peele. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's smart comedy, but it's dumb comedy, too. Oh, yeah. I loved their It's show. smart, lowbrow comedy, I guess. But. <laughs> a, a, Ron. Yeah. <laughs> I just watched that substitute teacher bit uh, so the other good. day. <laughs> Last but not least. Oh, wait, you've already gone. I forgot you went first. I jumped the gun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's everybody, right? That's we okay. did it. Perfect. Podcast over. Yeah, well done, guys. Uh, Ryan, <laughs> I really love the way you loaded up your uh, computer uh, screensaver with like DC and comic book photos for this podcast episode yeah, specifically. Yeah, that's exactly. It was it's only for this episode. It's not yeah. usually like that at no, all. No, no. It's never like that. No. Yeah, it's just today. Ooh, I like that one. I like you even put your, your Superman shirt on. You had to dig it out of the bottom of your closet yeah, to wear it for this yeah. episode. It's really worn. We're all, and, what, yeah. we're I, actually, okay. I actually dressed for it this time. Yeah, I did too. I, I'm, me and Chewie I lo- went I kind of overdid it. I almost wore a Stan Lee shirt I and I had to take usual, it off. I put on clothes as people were arriving this morning. <laughs> That's true. So I don't put much thought into it until <laughs> later. I, I have a Green Lantern shirt that I love and I can't find it. And I'm very annoyed about that. I'm wearing, but I do have a Green Lantern ring. I'm you are wearing an Elhoffer designed Wonder Woman uh, cape. Uh, top thing. It's for it, it's for serious. It's almost as if we have a theme to today. And today's theme is <sighs> Justice League. Uh, the embargo lifted last night on Twitter reviews, Uh-oh. 
And Wait, just Twitter reviews? Just Twitter reviews. <laughs> okay. Wow, cool. Really? Yeah. yeah they no, have, really? Can, yeah. Like now that Twitter we have 280 characters, reviews. they're going to yeah. uh, lift the embargo. Okay. Oh, they doubled the character? No. Uh, they did this uh, with, I don't remember what a movie earlier this year. They allowed people to say on Twitter what they thought of it, but you can't write a full review. Oh. Um, and every, there was two or three that were like, all DC movies suck, so this one sucks too. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, which would be a very uh, Rich Roy review. <laughs> um <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> There's so many times I just feel like I need to just block him <laughs> because I want so to say grumpy. so many mean things. Um, but overall, I would out. say the reviews so far have been positive. Yay. Not great, but positive, which means I'm going to think it's the best movie ever made, but that's yes. okay. You thought Batman versus Superman was the best movie ever made. It was made. fantastic. As long as there's a decent portion of this movie that's showing us Aquaman's abs, I am all on board. Oh, oh yeah. He the, looks like he has no shirts. Yeah. The, yes. I mean, I'm, that's how it should be. I'm a fan of Bat Butt. But the, yeah. From what I hear, the, fir- the two people who steal the entire movie are one woman, of course, and The Flash. Oh, I was hoping Aquaman, cool. but yeah. They say Aquaman's cool, but his Ezra body Miller, steals the show. Yeah, yeah. Ezra Miller as Barry Allen apparently is just phenomenal. <laughs> oh, nice. it, you got? Have you seen the trailers? I don't want to spoil the moments. No. Okay. Uh, I, I've seen a few, but I'm I'm trying to stay well, away now. Aquaman's seen... flying around the city, like leaping off the other superheroes. Oh, yeah. It's so good. I love. I that. can't wait for that scene. He doesn't fly. He leaps. That's he what leaps. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah just he being falls thrown. with style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any Toy Story fans out there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so in honor of Justice League, we mentioned this last week, but if you didn't listen last week, what we decided to do instead of talking about any of the DCEU movie, DCEU movies, even though they don't like that title, uh, which are all, in my opinion, fantastic, but the rest of the world's horrible, uh, I decided we'd talk about what most people agree are great movies and do all DC animated films in a battle. Um, we can't do all of them. They've been going on for about a decade, which they're now on Blu-ray in one big box. If anybody wants to buy that for me for Christmas, that would be awesome. Um, so we kind of went around. We realized that not a lot of us have seen a lot of them. So we kind of picked the ones that we thought either. But I, I think only Emma and I had seen ours before. Everyone else kind of picked one that we thought looked good. Uh, and I think we were all pleasantly surprised. I could be wrong, but we'll mm-hmm. find out. And we'll find out because everybody has to say theirs is the best in order to win the argument. Hence the battle. Battle. Woo! Uh, nice. Our totally judge best. today is John. Oh, yeah. I legitimately thought that John had picked a movie called Judge. <laughs> right. So that was just great. <laughs> I spent a lot of time trying to find a DC animated movie called Judge, everybody. And uh, that's why I'm the is dumb one. Is there a one. Judge Dredd animated movie? Uh, if there is, I couldn't find it. And, <laughs> and it's it would not be a DC. I know, but I don't know if there was one. I, I, I don't think no, so. No, there are movies called The Judge. They are not animated DC movies, Mm-mm. any of them. So, uh, yeah, no, I have fully explored all options. <laughs> I thought that was a movie. Right. It is an untapped oh, market. Now they need to make say, one. Does that mean we can make a movie and call it Judge yes. and get away with it? If it's an animated DC movie. Perfect. Perfect. I got we got some it. ideas. We can entitle it DC. that. <laughs> Judge, animated DC movie, not affiliated with DC Comics. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Hash, or like there's a colon and the subtitles like, this is for you, Emily. <laughs> you got one. Hashtag colon. <laughs> Hashtag colon. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, Hire us, people. John, I'm going to let you take over from here. John is our judge, so you get to run the show. All right. Uh, why don't we start this from the winner of the last battle, and then we will let... It's Brian. Yep. Oh, did I win the last one? Mm-hmm. Yep, you won the last one. I'll let you I go first. A lot to him. I knew I won last time. <laughs> oh, you modest person, <laughs> you. Uh, I would say then we'll start with you, and then you can pick who goes next. Cool. All right. Am I, am I ready to go? Yes, I am. Yep, you are good to go. Are start. You? Go, go, go. Go. Okay. okay, so my film is uh, Green Lantern First Flight, and I, I don't really, I didn't really dive into like the specifics of the making of this movie because with Green Lantern for me, Green Lantern is uh, far and away my favorite comic book character, uh, and I say Green Lantern, not Hal Jordan, because I like them as a team. Now this movie doesn't have the team, but that's okay. Um, Green Lantern, the film with Ryan Reynolds came out and it was a fucking atrocity to anything and everything Green Lantern. I love it. I own it on Blu-ray, but I know that it's terrible. Um, <laughs> Brand loyalty. This, it is a, it's Green Lantern loyalty right there. Um, the difference is, so if you don't know what Green Lantern is and the first thing that you watch is that Green Lantern movie, you're going to go, what the fuck was that? It was, an, it was this horrible movie. If you want to get an introduction to Green Lantern and know why I love Green Lantern, it's Green Lantern First Flight. This movie does such a great job telling the, the modern understanding of uh, his origin story. And I'm not usually into origin stories, but this one does it like 
perfectly. I would argue better than most Marvel films. Um, because it doesn't waste a shitload of time of like, you have these powers and how do you use these powers? And you're usually the most superhero movies are about somebody who's supposed to be the best at their craft. So having these really long, like you suck at your job moments, I always kind of get tired of. And first flight does not do that. So Avensor crashes into the planet. He basically says, I'm dying to his ring. Go find your replacement. And he goes and finds Hal Jordan, brings Hal Jordan back to him. And I'm saying he, it's a ring. Um, the ring, basically he puts it on and suddenly he is green lantern. He just clicks, which is perfect for Hal Jordan. Like Hal Jordan is like known as the best Green Lantern. Nobody can touch him. He is far and away the best, and that makes people kind of hate him. But having an origin story where the second he puts it on, he knows how to make constructs. He knows how to fly. He knows how to be in space. He just knows all of it instantly is so good for a Green Lantern character who's supposed to be the best at what he does. And uh, as soon as he gets the Green Lantern ring, he uh, basically all the other lanterns show up and like, oh my God, Avenger is dead. And who the fuck is this guy? So they take him out to Oa and at Oa, they basically like, well, we don't want a human as a lantern. There's a reason there hasn't been one because you guys suck. You're emotional and you're terrible. And uh, Sinestro is there and Sinestro basically tries to use him as like a fall guy for his plan to find the yellow element. For those of you who don't know, the yellow element, which they explained very well in the movie, is basically the source of the yellow lantern rings, who are basically fear. So you have willpower, which is green, and the antithesis of that is fear, which is yellow. And this movie is all about how Sinestro is trying to overthrow the Guardians, who are the ones who are in charge of the entire universe, and become the first yellow lantern and create his whole new um, lantern core. And they do this in a way where like you actually you can... If you don't know Green Lantern, you don't see the flip coming. You get that he's kind of a bad guy and that he doesn't like who he works for, but you understand that he likes Hal Jordan as kind of a frenemy. Like he looks at him and he's like, that guy's fucking great. And he knows it instantly because Sinestro was the best before Hal Jordan. So it just kind of keeps going where like you, you feel like you're getting an actual origin story, but you're not wasting time with an origin story. And you're getting like an actual Green Lantern story, which in a lot of these like first movies, you just kind of get a uh world building and then you're out the door and this one doesn't do that it actually tells a story that's engaging and it's fun and it has great action sequence it doesn't have a fucking race car for some stupid reason like it just does <laughs> green lantern right and it's just so much fun to watch as a fan of green lantern and if you haven't been a fan of green lantern this would be the best entry point if you don't want to read comics for whatever reason it's such a good job at setting up the characters setting up the world and making sure you know why green lanterns are a thing why they're the best at what they do and who they are and it's just awesome uh i wish they gotten um i'm forgetting his name now um from firefly uh um, nathan fillion nathan fillion who was in my movie he is in your movie and he ha he voices hal jordan in a later green lantern film uh the guy that got in this one is not bad at all but i kind of wish they'd had him because i was used to him because i've watched the other one a lot uh i like this one more <laughs> but i like nathan fillion more so it's kind of at odds with each other um but this one is a much better film which is why i picked this one uh i wish they'd gotten him but they still had michael madsen as kilowog which is awesome because kilowog is one of my favorite characters he's great he's basically the guy who trains the green lanterns <laughs> and michael madsen as kilowog is a, it's a really good casting fit he's funny he's always kind of grumpy uh but it the the long and the short of it is this is a movie for both non-fans and fans and it should appease everybody and it has a great just kind of fun atmosphere to it which is what a lot of like people say are missing from the dc movies and specifically green lantern the film so in short, if we could have gotten this movie instead of the Ryan Reynolds movie, Green Lantern might have been a much better experience for everybody. And that's it for me. All right, let's get that uh, response time. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right, the floor pretty, is to all the other haters. Pretty, pretty good. So, uh, does your movie have Batman in it? Uh, no. Then it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> is anyone in your movie unbound? Uh, sure. Uh, how? <laughs> Please explain. Well, well, they're not bound, and therefore they're unbound. But they have well, to start there's never bound. any binding. They, they did get bound. He gets put in like a big balloon thing by one of the other lanterns when they go to the other but side. That's not and bound. Then, that's contained. He looks pretty oh. bound. Green Lantern uncontained. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. All right. The most important thing is, why the fuck is Hal wearing a mask when he's out with the lanterns? Who does he think is going to recognize him? I mean, he's obviously a okay, human. Okay, that's he's a pretty solid question. No, it is not his mask. because people want to people want to take down Earth at all times. People like Steppenwolf, people like Darkseid from the upcoming movies. He always want to know those people. But it doesn't matter if anybody wants to go to Earth and take down Earth, and they know who Hal Jordan is. They're going to go straight for Hal Jordan's what? people. They're, they're going to 
a ri- okay. He's like the it's first superhero one hundred and one. No, okay, no. he's a human. He's like the only human. And then he's wearing. What are they going to take a look at his face and be like, "Oh, I know that human." What you can? They can't and you're arguing him. for comics from They're the 1960s. I mean, check this has been going on for like care. 50 I'm years. Just, oh, wait, wait. Are we arguing about the comic book or no? I'm just saying you're, you're arguing about a character design that was established I, 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 forever ago. I'm talking about the practice because he does take the mask off at certain times. Why does he put it back on? Because he's Green Lantern. Well, that's dumb. That's his suit. Maybe that's he likes it. That's what all of them do. He feels mysterious. The only one who doesn't wear a mask is John Stewart. Because uh, he, the other Green Lanterns don't wear masks. Why is how? All the Earth ones do, except for John Stewart. Well, that's all of them. Weird. Because he's not even on Earth. There's no other Earth superheroes there. wear masks. <laughs> Brian drinks his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> he liked the way Robin looked. <laughs> Thought it was cool. So he's like, "Let me get one of those, but green." <laughs> Can no. I get that in green? <laughs> is he using the ring power to make the mask? Yes. That's see, that's even weirder. Why are you expending green? fucking ring energy to make a mask of your face when no one here because he likes the mask it looks oh good on him God. So it's I have fashion. no problem with this yeah. yeah sure it's fashion take it for what you will he looks good in the mask <laughs> the character's already worn the mask he's gonna keep wearing the mask why are you wearing that mask and you hiding that pretty because face because I fucking want to so <laughs> any right. what? well wait any problems with the actual movie yeah. itself um, <laughs> apparently not if all we're talking about is fucking character I mean, design I'll call a slam dunk it way too long to realize that Sinestro was the bad guy because I mean his name is Sinestro the design True. is really basic. It's all very green. Like there's not it's that super much green. other colors. Yeah, oh, the Green there. Lantern movie's green. I'm still much. winning. I over mean, here. there's an entire <laughs> <laughs> there's an entire kaleidoscope of colors with the lanterns, and they only only those were not two. introduced till way later. This is so, a very early movie. Letter? This is an no, origin. I actually do. I actually do have a legit complaint. Yeah. And that, okay. that what I just mentioned is that like um, it, it is audience superior for like most of the movie. We realized pretty early on that Sinestro was the problem here, and then everyone else in the Green Lantern Corps is like, no, he's a cool guy. And but we've never really been established why he's but a cool he's guy. A really because, great guy, guys. But he's a dick from the moment we meet him. He never seems to be a good guy, but everyone seems to think he is. And so for the whole movie, we're just waiting for everyone to figure out that he's a bad guy. I I see where you're coming from. However, it is established that he is the best at bringing in people. So whether or not he's a dick, if he gets results at that point, they're basically the space police. So you have that one dick they cop. They do use Gestapo tactics. Yeah, so he is the dick cop. He gets results. So they trust him with bringing in the big bad guys. So that's kind of one of those things where like, yeah, he's going to go out and rough up some perps, but at the same time, he's going to get the guy we told him to get. So they might not like him as a buddy to go grab a beer with, but they like him because he does his job. And then he does it a little too Why well. does crazy. he want to use fear instead of the <clears throat> green? Because he thinks you can rule better through fear. Why? Because when people are afraid of you, they listen to you. Is his man is his thinking? How does he know that? Because that's what he does. <laughs> what do you mean? How does he know that? Because he makes people afraid of him, and then he does what he because it works. But why does it, it work? Why, if it already works, why does he need a yellow ring? Because that's it powers point. fear. Like it is powered by fear. So the more people are afraid of you, the more the yellow light gives you more power. So you recharge by making people afraid of you. But he already has a lot of power. He has more through the yellow light. Yellow light. Mm. Think of the yellow light like the dark side. You have more power the more you're willing to use it. But if you, it's all in. They even mention it. It's the greatest flaw of any weapon is the people using it. So if he was perfect at yellow, uh, being the yellow lantern, nobody able to beat him. But he gets so angry and tied up in his own shit. Hal Jordan's able to beat him. Mm. When when the ring flies off the dying guy, he's just like, find him. Okay, you know what? That's pretty sexist. What if the Green Lantern had been a woman? There are Green Lantern females. Yeah, I know, but he didn't say that to the ring. Well, maybe he's just being oh, uh, oh, gotcha. gender neutral. <laughs> no, him is him. not gender neutral. Uh, <laughs> I do not think that word think. I do not think. Oh, I screwed up the Princess Bride quote. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe he was gay, and the first thing he thinks about in love is dudes. So he just find him. I'm I'm still saying your I arguments were weak. As shit. <laughs> Mine is the only good one. <laughs> your movie indeed does not have Batman, and you could not defend that. <laughs> Not every movie needs Batman. No one was unbound. <laughs> wrong. Uh, I want to hear Chewie's unbound argument. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> go ahead. Go, go, go. Unbound, guys. It's called Unbound, but Superman is unbound. Because it's really fun when you bind him. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Woman can contest to that, probably. She's the only one who can bind him. This yeah, is true. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I pre- I just purely chose my movie off the title. <laughs> really? Yeah. Could not tell. Uh, 
<laughs> did you watch it? That? I did. I watched it. And I ended up liking it. Um, Superman is the third character introduced. You get Lois Lane first, doing her little quibs, and then you get Supergirl kicking ass. It's pretty nice. And Lois Lane goes, looks at her and be like, did you guys see the new girl in town? And they're all like, no, who is this? Ah, I'm scared. Uh, and then Superman comes in and does the, the I'm a Boy Scout bro dude guy thing he's just like uh supergirl this is my turf you shouldn't be here essentially that's not what he says but that's what his attitude and supergirl is uh and she know, does say this is my turf yeah uh, <laughs> and then supergirl is annoyed because i'd be annoyed i'm like i just saved your girlfriend <laughs> who you won't even admit is your girlfriend it's complicated uh, it's complicated guys it's really hard to be superman and clark kent you don't know you don't understand me my emotions are bound <laughs> that's actually true that's an allegory in the movie <laughs> Uh, so, and then they get invaded by uh, one of Brainiac's little um, things that seems to have been an accident. He was he just kind of got cut off course and went to Earth, and then Superman killed it. And he's all like, "What is this?" Uh, so he goes out, and finds out who Brainiac is, who uh, Kara already knew because they had attacked the planet before, and she was very scared. Planet and, Krypton. Yes, mm. Planet. Kry- I mean, everyone knows Krypton. Well, Not if you Earth. don't name it. There's a lot of planets. Right. Yeah. Planet Earth? Well, you can assume that... Never mind. <laughs> uh, so he goes into space, leaving uh, Lois Lane kind of annoyed because she's you know just had a serious conversation with him about their future, and he just goes, Oh, well, I'm going out of outer space, <laughs> avoiding this. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, and he fights Brainiac, which is actually pretty fun. Uh, it turns out that Zar, nah, Kara's parents are alive in the city that he stole, which I didn't really understand how they got there. Um, I lost my steam here, guys. But then you get to the fight where he gets bound, essentially. <laughs> there, oh my god, there is so much like this Binding. was this was not tentacle porn, guys. There was no like penetrating well no actually there is penetrating in this movie Where the fuck is this going uh brainiac <laughs> totally constantly shoves stuff down people's throats <laughs> and he does it to superman several times is uh, this a good thing or a bad thing uh, it's by it depends on if you're it, it depends on whether or not you are into tentacle porn and then you watch a superman movie where that makes you think of it <laughs> <laughs> not every superman movie does. <laughs> but this one has a lot of it <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is going well. I know. This is my defense, guys. Uh, tell, tell me more about the tentacles. But oh Superman God. gets unbound from the tentacles. <laughs> you just glossed over the tentacles. You got a minute and a half to go on about tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> Were they slimy? I mean, there's at least three sequences where he's trying to fight Brainiac, and Brainiac is just throwing tentacles at him. It's a lot of fighting. <laughs> and then they get they actually fight in a swamp which the whole time I was wanting Swamp Thing to come out and he didn't I was actually a little disappointed in that because he also has tentacles he does <laughs> tentacle uh. fight <laughs> oh my god missed opportunity so much binding <laughs> uh. <laughs> we killed Chewie I'm sorry pause the clock <laughs> Okay, but then he beats Brainiac. He shows Brainiac his flaw, which is essentially his lack of humanity, I guess, where he didn't really understand the world. He just viewed everything as files. And I'm like, it's it's very Doctor Who with Cyberman of you. Um, And then he goes back to to Earth, and he's all like, I understand you more, Kara. By the way, I found your parents. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And then he goes back to Lois Lane and be like, I'm so sorry, I was a dick. Will you marry me? And it's very like, whoa, like total like shift. Superman is wanting to own up those things. He's understanding that the women in his life are right and he needs to listen to them. It was actually quite nice. It was very, very educational for Superman. It should be educational for all men. Sounds like Henry Cavill really could have used a flight to space <laughs> <laughs> to d- do that, some learning. And he was totally unbound at the end, guys. Unbound. Yeah. Unbound. <laughs> unbound. But bound to a woman now. Bound to a woman, but he chose that binding. All right, I have one question. Was Batman in your movie? He could have been. Trash. <laughs> like, no, to me. So, like, what? I know this isn't just for this movie, but at one point even, I think Perry goes, oh, where's, where's Superman's gone? Superman's missing. And I was like, 
look around. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is missing? He makes the joke that uh, yeah. Clark Kent is also very unreliable. I think they all know, and they just kind of wink and nod <laughs> at Superman. They're like, sure, Clark, take off your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Real cute, buddy. We'll pretend. Uh, also, Diedrich Bader is in this movie. As as a, like a muscly asshole guy, and he's pretty great. <laughs> kind of, it was a weird character. It was a weird character. He's I a, he's a well much. established character. He's in Superman lore. He still shows up now. He's always trying to hit on Lois, and Lois is like, no. He doesn't so much anymore, but he used to all the time. Also, right? there was a speech in there where Superman like makes makes that dude's chair fall and like hurts him, and then Lois is like, you don't have to save me from a creepy guy guy hitting on me. I can handle myself. And I was like, but isn't that the opposite of what we're always telling dudes? We're always telling dudes, you know. Oh, it's really helpful if you call other dudes out on sexual harassment. And well, here's Lois but, like, I can handle it. Well, maybe if he'd called him out on it. That's a good point. Okay, yeah, he was, it was more all, so him getting Superman jealous. Because Superman was kind than... of a dick about it. Yeah. Like, that's true. He was just being the jealous boyfriend. He wasn't actually defending her that's against true. Uh, sexual okay, harassment. That's true. Mm. I'll take that. So here's my argument with your movie. Uh, because I actually, I, I, I enjoy almost all of the Superman movies that are part of the DCM universe, but they all have the same problem. Uh, and it's also a problem in the modern movies where they don't really get Superman. Like, Superman's kind of a dick the whole time. Like, that's not Superman. Like, that's kind of the problem that we have with the DCU. He DCEU. learns at the end of mine. Yeah, in like 30 seconds. where And his learning is like, oh, I'm going to overcorrect and ask her to marry me. All she wanted to do was go public with her relationship. He didn't yeah. learn shit. He's that's like, oh, so point. woman wants to get married. Okay, Superman. <laughs> <am I." laughs> I'm like... I feel like it's been like 40, what, 40, 50 years since Superman has been saving cats out of trees. And it's like everybody is trying to paint him in a different light like oh no. we gotta make superman dark how long has it been since superman has not been dark well, he's not dark <gasps> in the comics he's right. still not dark in the comics yeah. like the the comics still get the character and he's still great he's you also can... not dark in uh, have... supergirl on cw I mean, he's no he's been back and forth but no that's the comics, true yeah, yeah for sure but for the majority of right. it he is still a stern badass yeah. while still being the true blue guy and this movie, he's just not like he's just he's the grumpy modern superman that nobody really likes that much I also but, thought it was. But he's unbound now. <laughs> <laughs> I also like the. the ch- I have, I just thought a funny reaction to Matt Bomer being the voice because I was just like, oh great, voice actors everywhere are like cool. Now I can't even pretend to be a handsome guy. You pick like the best looking dude in Hollywood to be a he voice. Is, Fuck off. He is quite attractive. I actually, and I actually think Matt Bomer does a good job as Superman. I yeah. just, he I just does. I just think it's hilarious. Yeah. That in, in reality, he is just extraordinarily handsome, and now he gets to play the voice of someone who's extraordinarily handsome. Yeah. Uh, the only thing you didn't talk about much in your breakdown was you talked about Kara, but Kara really feels like more of the main character. One hundred percent, she is. She's I great. don't know why. Oh. Her abs are also amazing. Oh, they are the second lead. She's in the a, movie. <laughs> she is an amazing fighter. She yeah. is. She does not give a shit. I like, love all her not that, giving fuck. Yeah, she, Superman's just like, well, there's a way to do this, and Kara's just like, I have superpowers now. I'm gonna kick some shit. <laughs> this is my house. I'm a teenager. My parents are dead. I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but it's, it's <laughs> again why I have Cara the problem. In this movie. I want to watch the, a TV show about that car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. Uh, I no, thought we were about to get one in the beginning of season three, and then nope. Oh, I haven't started season three. I'm uh, on the Netflix cycle. Oh, okay. But no, so that's kind of another problem with the movie, though, is that it doesn't really know who its main character is. Because is it Superman in space, or is it Kara on Earth? Because mm-hmm. it tries to tell both the stories while servicing neither one of them. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to keep poking holes. <laughs> it's working. Hey, well, Superman got unbound. Kara was never bound, so so no one was bound at the end. No, no one. So was So the title still makes sense. All right, all, all right, well, yeah. unbound. All right. It still doesn't have Batman, but at least your title makes sense. Yeah. Well, uh, the, well, the only one that was kind of bound at the end was a Brainiac because now he has more of emotions, and yeah. that's a that's yeah. a problem for him. He'll get over those. That's Brainiac. <laughs> <laughs> Brainiac's basically just the collector with less cool hair. Um. I just beyond any of that other stuff. I, I think it's a well animated movie. I think it's a good entertaining film. But like, if I'm trying to compare it to the rest of the ones on the table, I think it just has the least like consistency. Like when it hits its strides, it hits them well. But mm. the, it's just not as often as say like. So mine just might flight. have a, uh, a deeper, like a bigger meal with it, with more things going on. While the other ones might be kind of. No, yours is a buffet <laughs> where half the food is shitty. Hey, hey. Oh. the other ones are very good, but the other half is shitty. Wait till you get to the dessert. <laughs> that dessert's unbound, yo. It's unbound. <laughs> All right, you get to pick who's next. Or wait, yeah. Let's just go in a circle. Okay. All right. 
It's All a right. weird circle. I did the. T- <laughs> Well, she's closer to me than I did Ryan. the 2009 uh, Wonder Woman animated movie with Carrie Russell and Nathan Fillion. And uh, this was, this is, until recently, this was the quintessential Wonder Woman movie. This was all we had, really. This is their, their her her uh, origin story uh, told in, in a really, really easy to digest format. So if you've never read the comic, you totally follow it. If you don't know anything about her story, you could totally follow it. But if you have read the comic, there's also a lot of really good, there's an invisible jet. There's Artemis, who's like my favorite character ever. And, and talk about no fucks giving. Artemis is the queen of that and has always been a badass bitch. And I fucking love her. And she's in this as a first to not being in the movie. Uh, I mean, the, um, the live action. Um, Basically, Wonder Woman, does, it's your, you know, it's the story as we know it. It's Steve Trevor uh, crashes on the island, although in this version he kind of saves himself. And then he runs across a bunch of women playing naked in a pond and goes, woo! And then they almost kill him. And then, uh, and then... Uh, snoo snoo? Wonder, snoo snoo. <laughs> Wonder Woman fights in the, in the way it is in the comics, where she pretends to be someone else and fights and wins the chance to go uh, to into the world of man. Only it's arrows and bracelets instead of bullets and bracelets, which I appreciate, because bullets and bracelets never made any goddamn sense anyway um so they go to america and then uh she's gonna fight aries and aries meanwhile is trying to be in control they they use more magical realism in this version because he is a god um which i think is pretty cool and so he gets the power of several other gods and then he raises an army of dead amazons which is very cool because it means the amazons are fighting dead versions of themselves and artemis and her sister have like this whole moment of like you're dumb you can't fight and she's like but i can read and that's how i'm going to save you and then um they uh and then uh, Wonder Woman defeats Ares and learns that she actually wants to stay uh, in the world of man. And it's it's kind of the story as we know it, but it's a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of really cool, um, even though it's animated, there's a lot of stuff that's uh, shot as if it's handheld camera, which I really thought was cool. Uh, shaky cam, a lot of like, uh, there's whip pans and stuff. Um, it's pretty neat because you don't see that in a lot of animation. Um and uh, Diana's just a goddamn badass. Artemis is cool. There's also this flying purple dragon, which is rad, and I want one, even though it's kind of evil. Um, I would <laughs> totally tame it and make it my own. Um, and then, the, but it, they did a lot of, they, considering it's animated, they used a lot of great production value. I mean, because you can't do this shit in live action without spending a zillion dollars. But they're, the battle scene, unlike everyone else's movie, my movie was an epic battle scene about people on Earth being fought uh, on a global, I mean, it was fought in one location, but it was just like for the security of all people on Earth, not just one little tiny town um, or like some alien culture off on another planet. Um, so, and here's a woman who's not even part of this culture, but she's fighting because she's fighting for the greater good. Uh, they also have Ares being um, really charged up by nuclear weapons, which is pretty, I kind of wish there was more of that actually, um, because it takes place in modern day. Uh, and I don't know. Oh, anyway, the way the fight scene, there's like these giant dragons flying everywhere. There's creatures fighting. There's ghost Amazons fighting real Amazons who come on ships and they're firing arrows. It's just shit you can't do in live action. It'd just be too cost prohibitive. And uh, there's lightning bolts from the sky. They make full use of what they have, but they still make it feel like a real story. Uh, Steve is a little bit sexist. That is a, that is a thing. Uh, Kate talks about a rack. Um, and, uh, <laughs> And he, but, but that's actually something that pays off because there's a point at which Steve just starts confessing to her that uh, he he knows he's a little sexist. He knows he's womanized and he feels really bad about it. Like maybe he needs to change. And then he looks down and realizes that his foot has gotten stuck in the lasso. And he's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that because it pays off. It's like, yeah, Steve is sexist and he admits it. And in the end, he Not of his own free will. Not of his own free will. But I'll save does, that for a minute from now. But, but it does <laughs> make him realize some things about himself. And later on, he's like, I, I care about you. I'm stupid me. I'm a boy, but I care about a girl. And then, because uh, he's a child. Um, and, uh, and it's Nathan Fillion is perfect casting because my movie does have Nathan Fillion in it. Unlike Brian's movie, um, it doesn't have Batman. You know why it doesn't have Batman? Because Wonder Woman doesn't fucking need Batman. He doesn't have any goddamn superpowers. Anyway. <laughs> or his stupid kid who's a shithead. Anyway. <laughs> well, well, you're not wrong either. about his kid being a shithead. <laughs> Because she has Artemis, who's way cooler, uh, and has awesome hair. Let's just go with that. Um, uh, and she wears the iconic costume, and it's fucking great. <laughs> we'll say that was a full ten. All right, there you go. Now let's rebut. 
your movie has a real Steve Trevor problem. <laughs> like, holy shit. Like, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but my God. Like, Steve Trevor is not the greatest character ever written, but holy fuck. You're not wrong. <laughs> He tells Wonder Woman's mom that, man, that chick's got a nice rack. Wow. Like, whoa, dude. And then he well tries played. to get her drunk to fuck him. Like, holy shit. <laughs> like, as good as Chris Pine was, Nathan Fillion's character is bad. Like, just completely <laughs> the other direction. And Wonder Woman's still wearing her underwear outfit in this one. Yeah, it's iconic costume. Yeah, iconic and old. I mean, there's no way you could walk around in this. No, that's totally like, every time I've looked at that, I'm just like, God, the 80s were weird. Maybe. They just shoved up women's like pelvises that's all the way up true. here. And they're like, yeah. are, look. So the question we Wonder should Woman be asking. definitely had to go get some shaving done, guys. <laughs> the question we should be asking is, why isn't she wearing a mask? You want to go out in public? She's like wearing that? a mask on her she? forehead. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you shaming her outfit? Absolutely. Oh, so she can I. wear whatever the fuck she wants. I was she shaving can her wear. Outfit I'm not sure if she should wear underwear. because it doesn't look like good battle attire. No, no. it does not. I've always had issues with that. I mean, the skirt no has a little bit more to it. Uh, but that's from the comic book, guys. Yeah. Oh, that works for your argument, but not for mine? What the fuck? <laughs> Uh, but the, beyond just the Steve Trevor thing, the only other major issue I have with your movie, and I think it's it's kind of for everybody here, but it bothers me more than yours, uh, it has a real pacing issue. Like it has, like it really steps on the gas and then hits the brakes, and then really steps on the gas and then hits the brakes. Uh, and it's like the moments where it hits the brakes are fine, but it just kind of feels like we're watching different movies whenever that happens. Specifically, I'm talking about the bar scene where they're supposed to be getting to know each other, but it just turns out he's trying to get her drunk. It, it's just such a weird sequence of like. In, in the modern movie, which is, you mentioned before we start recording, it's tough to watch this one now that we have the Gal Gadot version. But like you have these things where it's like, we want to see one woman kind of integrate into the world, and the movie felt like it should do that, but it didn't really want to do it. So it kind of felt like whenever we get those scenes of her trying to be a human, if you will, uh, it felt like it just really half-assed those sequences. I will say this, even though I'm should, this might hurt my argument, but but I will say one of the things that I was thinking while I was watching this is you can see the notes from the network. Totally, 100%. You can see Steve saves himself instead of her saving him. Yep. And I think that's all part of, well, we can't let Steve be helpless. And I think that, you know, a lot of the moments that slow down are, I can see the network notes going, well, we need to take a minute to do this. Or we need to, you know, whereas if, if the movie, I would guess, would if it hadn't had that necessity, then it might have been a little bit different. Yeah, because Steve's at his best when he is the the damsel in distress like that's when steve trevor is his best when he knows that he's the damsel in distress and it's just like well fuck it i mean call a spade a spade she's gonna save me and like they never let him do that we and didn't like, have the patty jenkins version exactly and this would have been a oh you can't have a man be damsel exactly. in distress you can't yeah. let that happen um even though they've been doing the comics since the fucking dawn of wonder uh, of woman course. but uh it's the only other thing that i have with it was that scene that you said was funny it still bothers the shit out of me because i thought he was actually like confessing mm. and it's like oh wow so this does kind of pay off and then you see that his foot's in her lasso i'm like oh so he doesn't deserve any of that credit because he just accidentally told her everything well i think no i think it's an important moment for him to realize that like he's but I, if he's admitted ar- that to himself and it does soften him a little bit for later like it's a first moment where he goes oh shit is all that true and later on when he's just like well i admit like i care about you you know mm. also she slaps him which is cool that's great but i but <laughs> I, I don't think that he didn't know it because he's like why am i telling you all this like it wasn't like oh i didn't know this about myself it's just kind of like no i'm being way more honest than i usually am so I feel like he already knew it and just didn't want to admit it. And then he just accidentally did because his foot, for some reason, snaked into her lasso. <laughs> Why does she choose to stay on Earth? Because she wants to save humanity. She wants to be like, be the hero and save everybody. We need saving, man. She, but she's also learned that people aren't that bad. Although, why Steve Trevor is her example? How does she, yeah, yeah, like yeah, Steve Trevor is fucking Steve awful. Steve Trevor's <laughs> only example. Like, what gives her this motivation? Because Steve she, Trevor? Maybe she likes Does he have a big soda. dick? Does she get to see it at some point? Oh, I bet he does. <laughs> I mean, you know Chris Pine did. He was very proud of it. I'm not he sure said he was above average. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't mean much. Do you, let that, do you always let that little thing tell you what to do? <laughs> In this movie. <laughs> In this movie, they, they do not have a moment near as She doesn't really have any clear motivation to stay on Earth. She just decides to be like, sorry, Mom. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, she just wants to help people. I mean, that it, that's always been kind of her motivation. This movie doesn't really feel it necessary to explain it beyond that, which I'm kind of fine with, but at the same time, it would have been nice to get a little bit more of, she went there to stop Ares, and she stopped Ares, and she's going to stay, because, meh, why not? Cheetah. 
Yeah, well, Cheetah does show up. She does? Yeah. Uh, it, end, you you don't even get her name. She just kind of runs out, kills some people. She's like, I got shit to do, and involves that woman. <laughs> does she purr? <clears throat> she more does the row. Oh. <laughs> I like to think that if I got to be All a half right. cat lady, I'd finally be able to purr. <laughs> yes, yeah, don't, don't throw it in my face. <laughs> <laughs> my, that wasn't even that good. But yeah, I can't it was do fine. It, it was I like a six or like seven. I like the Dustin from Stranger Things season two. Like, I can't do it. <laughs> His is terrible. It makes it so much better every yeah. time. <laughs> These pearly whites. <laughs> is this a character I don't know yet? No, it's no. Dustin. It's the kid with the lisp. In oh, the, in yeah. the second His, season, he, he gets teeth. Going, yeah, his teeth growing. Yeah. Yeah. He's very oh, proud man. of them. He's a good singer. Did you guys watch that oh, thing? Yeah, on, I uh, watch it. I on too. James Corden. He, I think that kid's going places. Fantastic. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know up, where they are. But honestly, I think going of places. all of the actors on that show, I feel like he's got the most potential to be huge because he's he's he can act, but he's also he. I feel like he's going to be really good looking, and yeah. he's also fucking he's, his timing. It's a roll of dice yeah. on him right now. I'm looking at him like you're going to either be really attractive or you're going to look exactly I think the he's same. Look really good. Yeah. And I, and I think I think that's going to help him get work. But he's also really funny. Like his timing mm-hmm. is just yeah. Yeah. all right. Totally off topic. Yep. Yeah. We got one left. All right. All right. Wait, all right. we have two left. No, just Batman. Just Batman. Oh, you, you, what is yours, John? D- uh, judge. He is oh, you're Judge. judge. <laughs> <laughs> well, judge you haven't, movie that does you haven't not talked exist. about Judge yet, so <laughs> you're up next. Uh, that's a fine movie. <laughs> okay. Couldn't find it. It was, it was there, bound. Wasn't it there, was bound up somewhere, guys. Wasn't there a Robert Downey movie called The Judge? Probably. Probably. Or we're all just judging him. You, you said it was specifically called Judge. So you I was judge. looking for movies called <laughs> That judge article is, judge. yeah. Don't put any articles in that. Ryan, you ready to go? I'm ready. All right, go. rip. All right, so my movie has Batman, and John's wearing a Batman shirt. Case closed. No. (laughs) I picked the audience shirt. Is he? Uh, My movie does have the the Joker in it. My okay, so I picked Son of Batman. Um, I had seen a few DC animated movies before, before, including uh, Flashpoint and The Dark Knight Returns, and I figured it would be unfair to pick either of those because they're pretty much instant wins. Uh, so I was at uh, was a good old Best Buy looking at all the DVDs uh, that have Batman in it because he's clearly the best character. And um, I picked this one because it has Deathstroke as the main villain. And um, I, I was always kind of lukewarm on him. And when he was announced to be in the upcoming Batman movie, I was like, what are they going to do with him? So I kind of wanted to see someone do something good with him. And this was pretty great. It's the story of... Um, um, Batman's son with Talia al Ghul, uh, whose name is Damien, and the film opens with um, them training with Rish al Ghul at his sanctuary, whatever it's called, um, and then um, Deathstroke come, comes in with a, a league of uh, ninjas, ninjas of his own and kills Rish al Ghul, and Talia and Damien have to run back to Gotham to find Batman and fight him off, and it, it's a pretty great movie. Uh, Batman is played by uh, Jason O'Mara, and this is the first... Uh, of his big long run with um, Batman animated movies. He's still doing it today. And he's another guy who could play Batman in real life as well. Um, if you guys have seen Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., he plays the new director uh, from the last couple of seasons. Not anymore. No, I just well, yeah, yeah. But that, I forget his name in the, in the show. And then um, Morena Baccarin is in it as Talia al Ghul. She's great. Um, uh, Stuart Allen plays Damian Wayne and goes on to continue playing him. Um, and I didn't actually know this, but D. Bradley Baker uh, makes some cameos in this movie. He, there's one scene in Arkham Asylum where Batman's walking down the hallway and you hear Joker uh, from one of the cells. And that's played by D. Bradley Baker. And he also does some man bat screech noises. He's one of my favorite voice actors. Um, Deathstroke is pretty cool. Uh, I mean, they, he is trying to overthrow the League of Assassins and... and you know, kind of take over, um, and and Damien has to stop him. And there's some great moments of like father son relationship between Batman and Damien, and trying to you know navigate that while of course being like, no, you can't go fight because I'm Batman and I fight alone. Um, strangely enough, they omitted Tim Drake from this movie. Uh, I, I, he was the active Robin at this time, or should have been. Um, uh, Dick Grayson is Nightwing. Um, and I kind of missed there being a Robin because it's like, why wouldn't Batman hire Damien? But he sees the costume and he puts it on and he steals the Batmobile or something and, and goes out fighting crime. Um, uh, yeah, I don't really know about Deathstroke. I, I He wasn't all that uh, that I was hoping he would be in this movie. He didn't have very clear, exciting motivations. He just seemed to be the big bad villain. And uh, they take him down in the end. There's lots of nonsense with the Lazarus pit. 
I don't really understand how Destro could get a jump on Rachel Ghoul, who is like centuries old expert trained assassin killer, and murder him. But then, you know, Batman's seven year old son is able to fight him off in the end of the movie. I guess it's the the Wayne genes that just make everyone so awesome. And they're excellent genes. And Batman is the best. And I like to uh, think that they share an actual pair of blue. And that's jeans. my whole argument. Batman's the best. It's the it's All right. the brotherly hood of the <clears throat> Batman blue jeans. <laughs> the brotherly hood of the Batman. <laughs> I wanted to make that movie. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I don't think Bruce Wayne owns blue jeans. <laughs> I'm sure he does somewhere. He, he's, he's, he's I think the cosplay community suit. has a, a the cosplay community has homework now. They have to create <laughs> a jean version of the Batman <laughs> costume. <laughs> Bat Dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's my main argument in this movie. Bat Dad. Right. And the end is like, can I drive the car? I know how. Nope. No, bat dad. I all right. Here's the rebut. So you mentioned what I think is the biggest problem in this movie is you don't have Tim Drake. Yeah, like, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. Because that's really what is gives just... a lot of the actual like conflict of the movie of who the fuck is this guy? He can't have my job. Right. And like that's really important to a movie where you have Damian Wayne, and it's kind of upsetting. Cause... It kind of went. It, they went all family with it. Talia is like a good person in this movie, or yeah, in yeah, this which... movie, and. Not really. I have some things to uh, say about that. Well, do, do, do. she's not no, a v- go for it, super cause... villain. Uh, can we just gloss over the fact that Talia totally raped Bruce Wayne? Oh, yeah. That's and... in a different movie. No, no. That's <laughs> a, no, no. When she says, th- when she explains how she got a kid, she says, remember that night that we were all romantic? And Batman's like, oh, yeah, when you put something in my drink? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And he, she's like, you kind of liked it. And he's like, I guess. And then she's like, See? FYI. Here's the kid that I forced you to have sex with me so I could get pregnant with. He kind of liked it, though. Uh, no. Oh, my God. That's, that's Ryan. Ryan. That's rape, Ryan. She <laughs> yeah. put something in his drink to loosen him up. She res- she kind of, like, mentally restrained him, and then she got pregnant so that she could have a kid. Is it so fair to say that later- Batman was bound? <laughs> Batman was totally bound. Yes. <laughs> so later, when he's all like, oh, so sad about Talia. I put her in a Lazarus pit. Oh, I'm so glad she's alive. Like, oh my god, she fucking raped you, dude. Yeah, yeah there's there's so many just fucked up character motivations. And I, I get, if you're not a big DC fan, you might not know that, you might not realize that Deathstroke is one of the greatest characters in all of DC. That's why they're trying to make him a hero now, because people love him so much. Right. Well, this show, movie, Manu Bennett. Uh, this movie does the worst representation no, they do nothing of for Deathstroke, Deathstroke fucking anywhere. No. Like it's just like what the hell was that? He's, he's just a, the he's same as in Arrow, basically. Actually worse than in Arrow. Uh, he actually did some good things in Arrow. I liked him in Arrow. Yeah. Like they're trying to get him his own spin off and I would totally watch it. Yeah. That guy does a good job as Deathstroke. This was horrible. Yeah. This was just a muscly dude with a sword. Yep. And it's just like there's so many great things. I mean I know there's a lot of people who really hate Damian Wayne and I get it. He's a very strange character oh, to get behind. Shit. I, I love Damien. <laughs> I love Damien too. I, I think he's great, but I, I get why people don't like him. And this movie didn't really even make me like him. Like yeah. I already loved the character. Sounded and... like a shit seven year old. Yeah, I see well, he's fight between Artemis and Damien Wayne, and that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like Damien is supposed to be a shit twelve year old until Rebirth when he turns thirteen. But like he's supposed <laughs> to be because <laughs> they want terrible twelve. Yeah, because they want him in Teen Titans and he wasn't technically a teenager. Right, right. Uh, um, sure. So yeah. now he's. 12 and it's just like he's just a kind of a shit bag like he doesn't really do anything it's like for steel robin suit and bitch about being able to drive a batmobile well, i like, like that that character though i like he's like raw he's like it's almost as if he just came out of the lazarus pit and he's like this monster of a person yeah but that would be entertaining if he was like an entertaining character but he's yeah. just kind of a shell with some like sarcastic quips and he's just kind of annoying well, which isn't damien any growth really i mean there's a little bit the end where he's just like i am robin i'm my dad's son so i guess i won't just murder everyone <laughs> Um, See, it's but good. it didn't feel it, it didn't feel that much of a. I mean, I feel like he's still gonna be a shit. And and he's still gonna hurt people. For a woman who was willing to rape Batman to get a son, she was really willing to give oh, that yeah. son with no problem. Oh well, you want to stay <laughs> with Batman? Okay, I get. It. I mean, he is Batman. That's pretty cool. I so mean, they're, <laughs> they're all villains. Batman is just a whole world populated by villains. Oh, That's totally. The, what the story is about? It's amazing. Yeah, but if th- you, if everyone around you is an asshole. Are you the asshole? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what Batman's about. <laughs> Who's the more foolish, the fool or the fools who hang around him? Huh. Yeah, so it's just, I, I don't think that this is a bad movie. I, I think there are, if you were determined to do a Batman movie, even you said it, there are better Batman oh, movies. Oh, yeah, three, at least. Uh, yeah, at least. Um, 
I don't know why you didn't do Red Hood. Because I didn't want easy mode, and I already had Batman, so. <laughs> Red Hood's just Golden Goose. Know, just sitting just, there. Everybody, Batman is not like the fucking, he's not like a god. Wrong. My character actually is a god, but Wrong. let's not, you know. Wrong. I mean, Green Lantern is better. We all Wrong. know that. Uh, Green Lantern <laughs> does I mean, have he, godly powers. Green Lantern has jewelry. But Listen, my guy. Awesome jewelry. How cool is it if you're unbound, a human who can hang out and with And he has I mean, every power, so, guys. Our people have like actual real powers, yeah. guys. Like, I got laser eyes. I got cold breath. I got yeah. Like Although strong. he loses his powers when he leaves Earth. When he's mine, bound. Mine yeah. just when has he her powers all her the fucking oh. time. Yeah, and Green Lantern does whenever he's wearing his ring. Apparently he Pretty can awesome. get his yeah, powers Mine is the only character who has superpowers 24-7. Too bad her movie's not better. <laughs> <laughs> You're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Batman rocks. <laughs> but he's bound. <laughs> Not in this movie. That's true, guys. Right, Chewie's God. is the only one who's unbound. <laughs> There's no argument there. <laughs> unless, unless Wonder Woman comes up with her lasso and then he is bound. It's, it's going to be real awkward between Lois Lane and her. <laughs> well, they both dated him. Although that, uh, it's not that comic. That was, wasn't a fun run. No, it was but not. they were dating him at the same time. No, no. Uh, Wonder Woman and Superman had a comic book together where basically Superman would go off and save people, and Wonder Woman would be like, "Have a con- have fun. Let me know if you need help." Yeah, yeah. What? It wasn't great. I'll you, want some, you want some, cookie, no, you want some cookies to go? Right, right. Can I set up your lunchbox? I mean, I do. All right, lunch John, how's it cookies. going? Man, <laughs> you guys made this fun for me to try and judge. Because uh, we have one that's really entertaining. Don't pee too And then one that was really decision. good. <laughs> <laughs> and wins, like automatically for based off the arguments. So the trick is to. Um, <sighs> I'm trying to think of a, a tiebreaker. Oh, where's the. Oh, I need the gavel. The gavel. The gavel. Someone the gavel. Get me the gavel. Gaveling. And wasn't there like a little thing to pee No. Like Just hit the table. Just hit the table. <laughs> Just smash this box. <laughs> All right. Spent seven dollars on that gavel. Yeah. <laughs> worth it. It's a nice <laughs> gavel. Totally worth it. That's that's a pretty fine craftsmanship. Some nice polished wood guys with a brass uh center thing we need that in the picture we'll put that on instagram <laughs> right right it's a real gavel. visual aid let's see so do i go with the one that had the best argument and make him win a second time in a row oh. <laughs> oh, or the best argument yes. or or <laughs> he's just do the I most confident the that's most not the best argument Boom. but also he had the like arguments for everyone's movie <laughs> and, Come no, out and no one had good arguments for at least half the countdown for him <laughs> <laughs> You just said I won. <laughs> no, so on. you're just gonna give it to somebody else, even though I'm the clear pull, winner. I like okay. Superman okay. Unbound way more than I like the Green Lantern movie. Right. Okay, I, so pull up the c- countdown. Uh, we're gonna do a minute, and I want uh, one last uh, statement geez. about Superman Unbound and uh, Green Lantern. <sighs> Wait, Wonder Woman wasn't the one that was the actual good movie? Yeah. I'm going for arguments. Oh yeah, good call. That's what it's it was. About. It was. Yeah, I admit when I was watching the movie, I was like, "Oh shit!" I hadn't seen and the, it. The, the Steve Trevor thing really loses me. Yeah, so like, I hadn't seen it ob- since the new movie came out, and <laughs> now that the new movie's coming out, when I watched this, I was like, "Oh balls!" If, if, this if, is if her, not as woke as I thought it maybe was. Maybe I shouldn't have opened my argument with, "Well, the third best of the Batman." Movies. <laughs> 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 All right, so you have a minute. Uh, Who's I would say first? each. Uh, let's do uh, Chewy first. All right. Well. Superman is unbound. (laughs) (laughs) After being so bound up with his feelings towards Lois Lane, uh, Uh his feelings of uh, need to protect but also encourage um, Kara slash Supergirl, and then his uh, new feelings towards Brainiac, who is literally binding him up in tentacles uh, and trying to get one of them to go down his mouth, which is apparently the only way Brainiac can absorb your information. That's weird, guys. <laughs> I can't argue with this. I'll and, try. Oh, God, <laughs> and, well, uh, there's a lot of good colors as well. And Car- Cara... <laughs> Kara gets some good time with Aunt May. Not Aunt May. God, no. oh Aunt May? <laughs> Martha Kent. Martha Kent. <laughs> good luck, buddy. Good luck. 
what, what's, what's the point? <laughs> I don't know. I know I where John's going to lean on this. Just, <laughs> this is, maybe just bow out. I don't know. I, don't I know mean, it's really you. weird. It's really weird that he has to shove things down people's mouths to like get their information. You got tentacles. Up. You got tentacles. You got Aunt May. It's over. This is tough. I'm, like, I'm at a crossroads, a very difficult crossroads. But you gotta give him a minute. <laughs> I gotta give I, you a minute. <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> I know where everyone's gonna land on this. I can argue oh. that mine's the better film, but oh, I can't make God. you laugh. I thought hers is the better film, no. <laughs> and here's the thing: like, She's not I do, I would do, based off your argument, I want to see yours like right away. But I also am so curious about the Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Like oh, this year, you know what? Here, I'll, I'll, okay. So, so, but you have. I want to give you a chance though, because it's like. All right, all right, all right, all right. There, there's. Oh my god. All right, so the there's my timer. I know I'm not going to win this argument because of that general reaction, but I will say this much: <laughs> Superman Unbound is really nothing to do with him being unbound. It was just a title they threw at the fucking wall. So it's great that Chewie loves this so much. Has nothing to do with the fucking movie. Green Lantern First Flight? Oh, it's his first time as Green Lantern. Hey, that title makes sense. We don't have to somehow fucking figure out how to fit Unbound into the movie. No, Green Lantern is a better movie because it actually tells the story of Green Lantern, where Superman Unbound tells three or four different stories and all of them mediocrely. Like, So that's why Green Lantern is the better film. It's far and away. It's more entertaining. It's more about Green Lantern. It's more about everything that I want to see in a DC movie where Superman Unbound is really just about Superman goes to space to fight a tentacle monster, apparently. Uh, <laughs> apparently. I missed that part. <laughs> Uh, but long and short, I mean, I, I love Green Lantern First Flight, but if Chewie takes this one because she thought Aunt May was in the movie, I guess I understand. <laughs> Sorry, Martha Kent. Uh, Supergirl is in the movie, and she's great. She okay. is. Okay. I, I was trying to get that out, but I was laughing too hard. Okay, <laughs> here's the thing. is I, I do appreciate funny, uh, but you had a good argument. I am going to go with Green Lantern. Uh, oh. Are you sure it wasn't a guilt trip? Sorry. No. I, Mary say, in brightest day and blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those what? who worship evil's might be with my power. Bad. Green Lantern's light. As, as funny as it oh, was. Go Batman. <laughs> as funny as it was, the Aunt May thing. I was like, oh, shoot. Sorry, if, if, I got my comic book wise old women mixed up. Oh. It, it was down to like, I was many calculations. And that, that one thing, I was like, okay, I got to give Brian the edge. And he did a good job. Backed in the corner. Ooh. Came he, out. It's two in a row. Do you guys think we're going to get a um, Spider-Man versus Iron Man movie? And at the end of it, Spider-Man's like, save Aunt May. And Iron Man's like, Aunt May. I do have to go save Aunt May. <laughs> It'd be pretty awesome. Uh, all right. So next week, we did have a movie lined up that I've taken off the schedule. I might explain at some point. I might not. But basically, it's just not the right time to talk about that movie. So... We are going to do a preview of the rest of the year and kind of talk about this past year and everything like that. It'll be a nice little short episode for you to listen while uh, celebrating Thanksgiving with your family. And then after that, we have The Big Sick, which I'm very excited to talk about because that movie looks phenomenal. I'm excited. Uh, uh, that's really it for coming up. Uh, December is a bit of a question mark right now. It will happen, I'm sure, um, unless it doesn't. I mean... uh, but I will throw some movies on there. I know we will do our... Now my favorite battle, which is where we do the randomly assigned uh, Secret Santa episode. Uh, and we might do something else. Who knows? Cool. Sounds fun. We oh. have we have episodes coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Almost every week. Maybe. <laughs> Depends on the week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but on that, thanks for coming back, Ryan. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me anytime. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. We will this have was... you anytime. <laughs> That's I'm called tired. being bound. I'm tired now. I, I, have, I laughed I am. myself so hard yeah. that I'm exhausted. I need a nap. This was a good one. I like this one. Oh, thank you to uh, uh, our friend Jason for coming up with this episode because he and yeah. I were discussing what to do for Justice League. Thank you, Jason. Nice. Thank you, Jason. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. So, bye. 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 bye.